Welcome back everyone and thanks for joining me again on that series on sauces. Now we've been talking a lot about brown sauces today. We're going to finish this series talking about one last thing, which is the white sauces. White sauces is something we don't talk about that much, but they play an important role in French cooking as well. And best of all, yes, you can make plenty of them at home as well. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate and talk about the white sauces. What are the core components, what you can do at home, and we're going to be doing one of the most important white sauce there is, which is the velouté. Let's not wait any time and let's get started. Now let's be brief and concise. Talking about white sauces, it's not always easy. So first off, the new mother sauce classification goes as follows. The first branch are the brown sauces. The second branch are the white sauces. White sauces are called this way because they are based upon a white stock, which is sometimes referred to as a white chicken stock, a white veal stock, or even a fish stock, or milk. Now, why are we staring about <laughs> flour and butter on here? Because all white sauces have one thing in common, is that they are all based on uh, a roux. The roux is a mixture of butter and flour mixed together, cooked uh, for a few minutes, that creates a compound, it's called the roux, making a roux, and that compound is used to thicken all sorts of liquid. Either milk, when you make a bechamel sauce, for instance, or stocks, like we're going to see here with a chicken stock or something else, to make a velouté. And these are the two sub-branches of white sauces. You've got the bechamel sauces, bechamel base sauces, and that starts with the bechamel, and then you add other ingredients like cheese and egg yolk, you can get a mornay sauce, you can add onion, you get a soubise, and so on and so forth. And on the other side, you've got the velouté, which is the roux mixed with a stock of choice that will yield either a chicken velouté, a veal velouté, a fish velouté, and so on and so forth. So this is the rundown for the basics of sauces. And what I want to do here is not to demonstrate how to make a bechamel, because I'm sure you've seen this before a million times, but instead I'm going to share with you a recipe that is actually taken from her book on how to make a very simple and quick chicken velouté, because I think uh, the velouté is not used enough, and once you know how to make it, it's actually superb and it's super versatile. You can use it in all kinds of scenarios. So let's jump in. We're going to begin here by making the roux. So the roux is a mixture of butter and flour together first. I'm going to use a medium heat and melt the butter, then we're going to add the flour. My butter is melted. I'm going to add all of the flour and I'm going to mix together. We can reduce the heat. We don't need a high heat or anything like this. And we're going to make that compound called the roux. And here it is. Look at this. You see, that's kind of paste, almost like, like a batter or a dough. And all what you need to do here, when you got that roux, is to cook it. So there's different kinds of roux, depending on how long you cook it. Up to two minutes is going to be a white roux, three minutes and above is going to be a blonde roux, and if you go, I think, over four or five minutes, you're going to get a brown roux. But here for white sauce, you can go to white or blonde. Blonde and it's the color I'm going to go for here, three minutes on low heat. Because of velouté, you want a bit of toasty flavor, nutty flavors. The time is off. I'm going to take this off the heat immediately and put it on the side and we have to wait for this to cool down completely. If your pan is really thick and retains the heat too much, you can plunge your pan in a little bit of cold water in the sink or something until here to stop the cooking. Okay, that's a little advice. The roux is now ready. It's cooling down and we have to wait for it to completely cool down. So that leaves us with some time and time management is great. <laughs> it's a great thing to learn when you cook. So because we've got a bit of time, we're going to take care of the garnish. And I'm going to start by sauteing this mushroom that I've got. Okay, I'm going to warm up a bit of olive oil and butter and pan fry the mushroom. It's bubbling away. Perfect. I'm going to add mushroom and we don't use tons of mushrooms. Huh? And from here, a grind of pepper, a grind of salt, you know the gist, huh? sautéing mushroom, nothing new, so you know, you can do a high heat, medium high, and we're gonna get some blonde coloration on here. Perfect, the mushrooms are now ready, they are not overly brown, because it's a white sauce, you tend to really avoid really dark browns, just a few minutes is enough, and now we're ready to mix our stock into our roux to make our base velouté. The majority of time when you make the, the velouté, you're gonna be using a cold roux with a hot liquid. Here the stock. Anytime you use a stock that you've made the day before, it is always a good advice to bring it to the boil, 
First off, to sanitize it, sterilize it, okay? So there's no problem, you can show it's gonna be safe. And also it is very important that it's really reach boiling point when you're gonna mix that with the flour and butter to really have that thickening happening, okay? Very important. We talked about white stock. What is a white stock, a white chicken stock, a clear stock? I'll take a little ladle, this is how clear it is. See, compared to a brown stock that is really, really brown, this is called a white stock, a very clear stock. That's all it is. It's boiling. Now let's mix this with the roux. For this velouté, we're going to be using half a liter of stock, so a bit less than two cups. One of the mistakes I can see a lot of time when people make a velouté is that they turn the heat on, oh, they start bringing it back to the heat, and then they pour the stock, the warm stock, over. No. When you make a velouté, there's no heat. Heat off, remember your stock is boiling. We're gonna pour half of it first, 250 ml, and the heat that's contained into here is enough to get the whole thing started. So first you dilute everything, you mix everything thoroughly, you wrap the side and everything, catch all that roux in there. I've mixed everything, my whisk is now not needed. I can now turn the heat on medium, okay? I'm gonna pour the rest of my stock. If you want, you can filter it to remove any impurities. The more you filter your stock, the better. And we're gonna now bring this to a boil and start to thicken the velouté. Okay. The velouté has to be boiling to thicken properly. Let's have a look at the consistency. Remember the stock that we have. Now with the roux, you've got that kind of syrupy kind of consistency. The base velouté is now made. This is a base chicken velouté in its simplest form. If I'm using a fish stock, I would have a fish velouté. If I'm using, uh, you know, a veal stock, I would have a veal velouté and so on and so forth. This is why it's so practical. You can have already all kinds of different sauce. Needless to say that you cannot make a velouté of quality by using a store-bought stock. That works with the shortcut with the demi glace that I showed you. You can do something about it. A white stock, absolutely make your stock from scratch. Otherwise, it's going to be... Zero flavor. So now that this is boiling, uh, we're going to take a shortcut. Usually we're going to have to have an, an essence of mushrooms and be very diligent for all the, uh, the things you're adding to here. For my version here, for the home version, we're going to put everything in there. Mainly, let me grab this. First, the mushrooms and then the cream. It is already a little bit more pleasant. We've got some mushroom, it's gonna add some flavor, and now I'm gonna add my cream. This is a shortcut, as I said, and this is my way of making things very simple. So we mix all the ingredients together, the base ingredient, no salt, no pepper yet, no lemon, nothing. This is only at the end. And what we're gonna do here is to reduce that velouté for eight to 10 minutes, and maybe on a very light boil, to kill that kind of flowery taste and concentrate the flavor. That's all you need to do. The time is up. I've reduced my heat to very, very low. It is now time to adjust the seasoning and add the final touches of everything. So first, look at the sauce. Look at the velouté, spoon coating consistency. Look at that spoon and put my finger, beautiful. Okay, we're gonna taste. And this is when you're gonna know, okay, I'm gonna add, I think here, a pinch of pepper, uh, sorry, of salt. And a little bit of pepper, usually it's white pepper, but uh, I don't like the taste of white pepper for some reason. So I'm gonna put that in, mix that in. And I'm gonna add also a dash of lemon juice. This is up to you, don't put too much, it's just to add a zing. And I'm gonna add some grated nutmeg and cayenne pepper and we're gonna be done. And this is for the cayenne pepper, same thing, a really a little, little bit. You don't want to have a, the fires of hell into your dish. And same for the nutmeg, it is not everybody that adds nutmeg. But the traditional method, the old method, we had a little bit. That's it. I'm going to mix the whole lot and we're going to be done. So what I'm going to do here to see what we've made properly, I'm going to pour this in another container, rinse and clean my pan, and then we're going to discuss and wrap up the video. And we are back. So what do you think I'm going to add for the end of that sauce? If you know me and you know the channel and you know French cooking, I'm sure you can find the answer. I'll leave you like a few seconds. Three, two, one. And the answer is butter, of course. <laughs> There's a, always a little bit of butter at the end. We're gonna stir through, and because this is my sauce, and I'm, you know, I love uh, parsley. It is optional, of course. I'm gonna add my touch of color by adding my parsley because I just find it makes a nice sauce and it's nice, nice and fragrant. And that's it. I'm gonna wait for this to melt, and I'll 
chicken velouté is gonna be ready. And we are finished. You can give the sauce a final taste. I love to taste my sauce at the end. Okay, look at, look at this. Beautiful. Mm. Always at the end that things, look at this. It's at the end, everything comes together. Oh, you got some mushroom, look at this, it's a velvety kind of sauce and that will go perfectly with any white meat, veal, turkey, chicken, usually huge for poached meat and you can use the poaching liquid and cooking juices of uh, meat that you've uh, poached to make the velouté. Um, but making it in advance with a chicken stock, it's super handy. So there we have it, that completes our video on how to make an easy chicken velouté at home. Now remember that this recipe as well as the chicken stock that you've seen in that video are both recipe that you will find in our upcoming book. It's coming on the 21st of November. I think next month there would be a reveal on the channel. And when I get the first autocopy, that's gonna be really excited. So if you want to see this recipe and more, pre-order the book, link in the video description. And if you want to wait, it's gonna be just in time before Christmas. If, on the other hand, you really love that series on sauces, you want to learn more, including uh, learning how modern chefs and today's chefs have actually reinvented the velouté, ditch the roux, and make it in a brand new way, you will find this in our special online course that we have that is called Mastering French Sauces at Home. It is the most extensive and most complete course that exists anywhere online with more than 40 sauces and a whole rundown on stock making and white stocks and fish stock and anything under the sun. Again, link in the video description. If you're just happy to watch YouTube, I also have something for you because next week I will show you a signature recipe from Paul Bocuse. Paul Bocuse used an old technique in some very old videos where he cooked a whole chicken, break it apart, make a sauce and transform it into a velouté at the end without the use of flour. So there's a bit for everyone out there. I will see you all next week for more French cooking videos. Take care all. Bye bye.